Today we're going to cover a new concept called specific heat capacity, but it's something that relates to a lot of things that you're already familiar with. So, specific heat capacity has the following definition. The definition is, it's the ratio between the heat applied to something relative to the mass and temperature change for that substance. So that's a lot of stuff. So what we're going to do to simplify that down a little bit is we're going to look at an equation. So the equation is that heat is equal to the mass times this new concept called the specific heat capacity times the temperature change. And that's an easy equation to remember because it looks like it spells out MCAT. Mistake number one is that having the objective on the board here is going to limit a lot of the top students from thinking about the ideas present in the concepts and instead are going to focus on just how do I get a calculation done, what units do I use, and how do I plug into the equation. Mistake number two is using the definition here first. This definition has multiple concepts in it that are too complicated for a novice student to kind of understand as they're learning, such as temperature and heat. And also we're doing mathematical concepts with those, like ratios, that are going to make this too early for the student to be able to piece all of that together. And so instead they're just going to learn it as a particular phrase. Mistake three is giving the students the equation at the beginning. They're more than capable on their own of figuring out these types of problems. They don't need an equation to do it. All you need to do is give them units or a constant and so on and let them work and figure out what tools they need in order to figure the problem out. By giving them the answer to start, what you're doing is limiting them from doing any thinking on their own, and that's going to make their learning that last as long and that work as well. Now, in this equation, Q stands for heat, the units of which are joules, and that heat is equal to the mass, which is going to be in grams typically, times the specific heat capacity. So let's just leave that as the letter itself. And then finally, we multiply that times the temperature change. which is in degrees Celsius. So when I look at what this specific heat capacity is, it is some value that relates the number of joules applied to the grams and the temperature change. So for instance, for water, specific heat capacity is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Here we see the cognitive band get lowered a little bit where we start to move a little more slowly. The problem is, is that everything is too abstract for the students to take anything along with. So here you see the heat linked up with joules, so the students will learn to identify joules with Q, but they won't necessarily know what either one is. Same thing with delta T, even though they might have a better idea. So we're again robbing them of all the thinking that they can do by doing this in too simple of a fashion. Additionally, we want the per to be per one gram, per one degree Celsius for the changes. So if we were to go ahead and do a sample problem where we said we had a big puddle of water and we had 47 grams of water and we wanted to heat it up from 20, 22 degrees Celsius to 47 degrees Celsius. The way we would plug that in is we would take our equation, Q equals MCAT. And we would say that we don't know Q, that our mass of water is 47 grams, our specific heat capacity is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius, and that our temperature change is 22 to 47, that's a change of 25 degrees Celsius. So what we could then do is we could multiply this, and when we do that, what you'll notice is that the grams cancel, the degrees Celsius cancel, and we're left with joules, so 47 times 4.18 times 25 comes out to a final answer of 4,900 joules, and that's rounded so that we can match our significant figures, and we get that as our final answer. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take that sample. So the video cut off there, but what the instructions were going to say is that the students would then try 10 problems on their own. A few problems we see going on. One is, is that as we go through and look at the plugging into the equation, the teacher misses the opportunity to allow the students to do retrieval practice and assess how they're doing at that particular point. 
they can't identify anything. He's doing all the thinking for them. Second problem is that the numbers were not intentionally chosen. The teacher's making up the problem as he goes, and that's going to allow him to miss out on opportunities to do things that mathematically uh, highlight ratios, such as using a 4 to 1 ratio or something like that with that 25 degrees, and he's totally unprepared for that, and so therefore he misses out on some points. He also goes much too fast through the whole thing, and so students are just going to have to rely on the written version of this in order to do their thinking. Okay class, here's what I want you to try. So we have two different substances that are different, substance A, substance B, and we have this graph of heat versus temperature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in some heat. I'm gonna add some Q, and I'm gonna add the same amount of heat to both. The same amount of energy goes into block A and into block B. Masses of both blocks are the same, initial temperatures are the same they're not gonna end up at the same temperature. What I want you to do is I want you to take this and I want you to think about which block will end up at the higher temperature. First thing you should notice here is that there's a much lower cognitive demand. We're only looking at heat and temperature change and nothing else. We're also looking from two different perspectives, from a graphical perspective and an object that would resemble something we saw in the experiment. And so that allows the students to do their own thinking for this where they're responsible for what they're learning. Uh, it's possible the teacher could have tied in prior knowledge better, maybe that happened before, but the big idea here is that we're setting up a system where the students can create multiple pathways to this knowledge into their head. So they can have multiple pathways of retrieval and multiple pathways of learning that's going to build a stronger connection to this piece of knowledge. Okay, now which block ends up at the higher temperature? Right here the teacher gives the students an opportunity to voice their opinion verbally, which allows them to think about and assess whether they did it and reflect on whether they learned this idea or whether they understand this idea. Additionally, at this point, the teacher has given them no knowledge and has not input anything for them to do the thinking for them. Rather, he's still allowing them to think. Okay, interesting. So what we're seeing here is that when we apply energy to a substance, the temperature changes are not the same. And that could be tricky because that means that we're putting a certain amount of energy into the particles of A and they're changing how they move, and we're putting the same amount of energy into particles in B, but some reason they're changing to a different speed than they are in A. So what's interesting is we can take a couple things that we can use from that. So for instance, you may have heard of a thing called a calorie. So a calorie is the American unit for energy and a calorie is, is defined as the amount of energy to heat up one gram of water, one degree Celsius. So if I have a gram of water, I put in one calorie of energy, it'll heat up one degree. But no one uses that, so we're not gonna use that in the chemistry class. We're gonna use a thing called a joule. And there are 4.18 joules for every one calorie which means that if we were to put 4.18 joules into one gram of water, it would change temperature by one degree. And so that actually we can turn into a constant for water that is 4.18 joules per one gram causes a one degree Celsius temperature. A big difference here between the definition the teacher is providing now than in the bad teaching is that here the definition is not to be mimicked, it's not to be reproduced, it's not just a basic knowledge. This is going to be used. So the students are going to use this definition in order to kind of organize their own thoughts. Uh, in addition to that, notice that the teacher here uses a per one gram and a per one degree Celsius, which is phenomenally helpful for the students to identify that for every concept, the for every one gram, for every one degree Celsius, they require 4.18 joules to change that temperature. So let's, let's look at some pictures of that. So if I have a gram of water here, and I want to heat it from 12 degrees to 13 degrees Celsius, how much energy would I need to put in? Right, I put in 4.18 joules. Now, what if I had 10 grams of water? So I've got a bigger chunk of water. Would it take more or less energy to do that? I want to heat it up one degree. Let's heat it up from 13 degrees to 14 degrees. So how much energy would that take? Right, it takes 41.8 joules to heat up that much. What if I had 10 grams again, 
But now I want to heat up 10 grams from 14 degrees to 24 degrees. I want to heat it up 10 degrees. Well, every 10 grams to heat up 1 degree takes 41.8 joules. Right? So we have from her earlier here 41.8 joules per degree Celsius for 10 grams. Now how much will it take to heat it up 10 degrees? All right, it will take 418 joules. Now, what I want you to do, I don't want you to come up with an answer, but if I had a puddle of 37.2 grams of water and I wanted to heat it up 24.9 degrees Celsius, is it possible to figure out how much energy that would take? Or, alternatively, for the exact same puddle, if I were to put in 147 joules of energy into the puddle, could we figure out how much its temperature would change? So using the same methods we're coming up with over here, is it possible if we had a little more complicated set of numbers to also figure that out? So what I want you to do is I want you to try and do number one on the worksheet in any way you can think of possible using all of these methods, using this 4.18 joules per one gram per degree Celsius for water. So at this point, when the teacher turns the students to do their own problem, they're now equipped with several things. They have particle level thoughts, they have two blocks that look like blocks they would see in the lab, they have a graph, they have a set of units that they can use, they have a concept they can use, and they have some scaling proportional reasoning done for them. What they need to do then is they need to think about what are all these tools, which ones can I use, which ones are not helpful to me, and they can then synthesize their knowledge into trying to figure out one single problem. That's something that is low enough on their cognitive demand, but still involves enough thinking that they'll be able to go through and think at a higher level, and they'll have better remembering, they'll have better understanding, and they'll also learn how to solve their own problems better and be independent thinkers better. Okay, so now that we've gone through and looked at number one, what I now want you to do is I want you to see if you can do numbers two through 10. Note some of the big differences here between the first set. So here, the teacher has the students do one problem they get to do that deep thinking, but they're also in a protected environment where they're only working on one thing. Now that they have some success or some analysis of their thinking, they're now turned loose to expand that thinking to try and do new challenges. What if I have a new constant? What if I have a new temperature change? What if I'm provided with a different set of variables and something else is withheld? And they can then go through and do their analysis on that, and they can do their own thinking and figure out how they need to use the tools that are given to them. So in this, the teacher has given them a set of tools and a set of models for how to do problem solving where the students can then independently figure things out. That allows the students to do thinking for themselves and that's going to lead to better retention and better understanding and overall better learning.